Thanks so much for the opportunity to participate in today's event. Um, are folks familiar with um, Gartner's um, hype cycle? Um, we, as this Gartner publishes a hype cycle that shows sort of the, the lifetime, the, the adoption and life cycle of technology. And you can see um, there are many exciting technologies in addition to AI, things like 3D printing, wearables, sensors, um, apps, and you can see them plotted along this curve. And what you notice is that most are in the early stages of um, in this what Gartner calls peak of inflated expectations, or really hype. Um, and while I'm a technophile and I like all of those technologies and would love to see them all applied to health, what we're really trying to do with these technologies is help address and improve the quadruple aim, improving overall population health, improving quality and safety, improving efficiency of healthcare delivery, and improving the clinician experience. But the gap really is, is that for all of these digital technologies, AI and other technologies, there's really limited evidence on their effectiveness. And Dr. James Madera, who is the former CEO of the American Medical Association, had a pretty bold statement basically comparing digital health solutions to snake oil. And he said this uh, and is quoted at the 2016 AMA meeting. And so there is a real opportunity here for us to add evidence, for us to help test and validate um, and help improve digital health solutions. And um, my argument is that academic medical centers can have a significant role in helping to advance this. And if you think about academic medical centers, we have expert clinicians, world-class researchers, we have rich data sets, and we have a diverse patient base. Um, and when you partner that with other academic collaborators um, from around the world, industry partners, startups, um, you form a, a really um, rich ecosystem to actually carry out this work. And um, at the Brigham, about five years ago, um, we saw a need to, to help fill some of these gaps, and we established the Brigham Digital Innovation Hub. The overall goal is of the iHub is to really drive more efficient patient-centered, efficient, and safe care through the use, development, evaluation, and commercialization of digital health solutions. And really, we do this through three functions. The first is to build a culture um, of what digital health can do. And that is through, um, we hold educational events, we hold hackathons and shark tanks, um, really trying to build um, the knowledge base and, and culture. The second piece is we have many investigators in lots of different fields that are starting to want to use um, IT and digital health technologies, but they don't have a lot of experience doing that. And so we've created a process and a guide to help them through it, to help them with how to access data sources, where to store the data appropriately, how to integrate with our EHR, um, how to find a software developer, collaborator, how to find a user experience person. And so um, we help them connect with the right resources. And then after they've done a pilot or a research study, we'll help them with spreading their um, intervention if it was successful and possibly with commercializing it as well. And then the final piece that the iHub works on is we look at hospital priorities and challenges that we're experiencing in our health system. And many of those challenges might be able to be solved through digital solutions. And so we look at existing products on the market, startups, um, and if there's nothing on the market to solve a challenge, we will actually build things to help address um, problems or challenges in the hospital. And I want to share um, one or two examples with you of some of the work that we've helped support. This is work from Dr. Alex Lin, who's in the Brigham Department of Radiology. He's an MR spectroscopist. And MR spectroscopy, as many of you are familiar with traditional MR, spectroscopy adds an additional layer, a, a few minutes to an MR scan, where um, the MR scan looks at tissue metabolism and actually measures the biochemical profile um, of a particular region of the body. Um, and you can see that um, you then get a pro on the left hand side, you get a profile of the biochemical um, activity in a particular area. And Alex has devoted, as a basic scientist, um, devoted um, much of his career to understanding and developing algorithms that can make predictions from these data from MR spectroscopy. And in fact, one of his algorithms has a very high sensitivity and specificity for diagnosing GBMs, a type of brain tumor, on MR brains. Um, however, the way that, uh, that Alex and his lab work is they take the data, it takes about three days to process the data in his lab, um, and then he provides it back to the clinicians. And so he worked with iHub to design a front-end interface for radiologists at the point of care so they could use the algorithms, the AI algorithms that he and his team are building and validating at the point of care and actually take that decision support and apply it to the patient in front of them. 
Um, this has gone on to uh, form a, a company spin out um, and is, is continuing to progress and is adding new and more and more algorithms to this. There are additional use cases um, in clinical care where we're using text messages and algorithms to communicate with patients and improve care delivery. Um, we're also working with um, medical devices and adding um, software tools on top of them. Um, this is work that a large team contributed to. I just want to thank the iHub team that makes this um, possible. And then I want to finally echo a comment that Ashish started with, which is digital is at the base of everything we are going to do going forward. It's a part of everything for health. Thank you so much. A very great presentation, Adam. And uh, I really wish to, uh, you just said to, to build, uh, we need to build a culture of uh, digital health. And uh, when I look, most of uh, the work on AI has been projected to solve problems in, uh, you know, developing countries. And uh, do you think that uh, AI can be a sort of a distraction to, you know, most of the countries in, developing, in the developing world where people still struggle with the very basic uh, uh, issues? I, I listened to Meta last time at Columbia University where he cited always trying to get to the roots of issues to handle them. We, we, we have, in Cameroon, uh, there was a situation where a young Cameroonian uh, engineer developed a cardiopath which could help, you know, diagnose cardiology problems in remote areas and transfer the, the result directly through mobile technology to cardiologists in the big cities so they could do the interpretations. Uh, government invested money. Most of these cardiopaths were sent to remote areas, but the nurses were not even there to perform just the basics to put the, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the notes where they are supposed to put it to just get the, Im the right images. They were not there. And secondly, the internet services were not functional. Thirdly, the cardiologists were too busy in the big hospitals to even get the results from the remote areas to interpret them. If we can't handle at this basic level, and if we cannot cultivate this culture of digital health, do, do, do you share the opinion that you know, AI could be some form of additional distraction? So I think you actually uh, nicely answered the question even better than, than I can. Um, the key with any technology, and AI is just one of them, is it needs to actually solve a healthcare need. And so the need needs to drive the use of it and not the technology driving the use case the other way around. And so I would argue we need to understand the, and this is where design thinking comes into play, we need to understand what are the issues and challenges in that particular setting, what are they prepared to, and how can you use a technology to help solve their gap or improve them. And they may not need AI to start. And actually, in fact, they may not need any technology to start. They might need more people, um, community healthcare workers. There may be other things that we need to invest in before technology, but technology may be part of that solution, and I think that's why we want to bring the right stakeholders together to design the right solution to the problems.